Here's a question we got on the internet from Taylor Davidson. What do you believe, I have to caution you to put it as briefly as possible, what do you believe is the most fundamental constitutional argument against Obamacare, even if it's not the most likely to succeed in court? Richard? I think the encroachment argument is a more important argument than the individual mandate for long-term implications. And the encroachment argument? That's the one which Elena. talks about the relationship between federal and state sovereignty, either through the spending power or through the regulatory power. That's the a layman answer. would understand it as states' rights? A, a yes. comment is states' rights and federalism. All right. I agree. <laughs> Shortest answer ever on uncommon knowledge. <laughs> the brief is shows on common <laughs> wisdom on your part. A que I'll do three of these because I want to see how you handle this one. A uh, question that came to us from the Internet from Brett Gossage. If the federal government has forbidden insurance companies from offering health insurance across state lines, how can it claim the power to regulate them under the Commerce Clause? John? Oh, because the Supreme Court has said that the power to regulate commerce includes the power to destroy interstate commerce. So Congress can prohibit interstate commerce as well as promote it, and that's what it's doing in this, this case. This was a response under the McCarran-Ferguson Act to what happened in a case called Paul, I think it was against Virginia, where they said that the selling of insurance in 1869 was not regarded as being an interstate commerce. That was overruled the day, on D-Day, I believe it was, in a case called Southeast and Underwriters, where they said they could do it. And what happened is there was such a pushback from the states that what the Congress did is say, we're getting out of the regulation of insurance voluntarily so yeah. as to preserve the old political equilibrium with a few exceptions. This is a very important kind of constitutional yeah. history. Because back in the day when Congress didn't want to regulate yes. things. Yeah. <laughs> there was I, such I, a I know we can laugh about, about it. Yes. No, it, it, it. Once has, upon a time. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> there is antitrust regulations <laughs> preserved under McCarran-Ferguson and so forth. A question that comes to us from the Internet, Spartan1104 asks, What's the most common misconception that citizens have about the United States Constitution? Oh, I mean that it means what the current Supreme Court seems to think that it means. Uh, well, that's a good one. I was going to say that the, uh, that the president is, in fact, responsible for everything that happens in the country and that they forget the division of powers between the, you know, the uh, president, Congress, and the Supreme Court, uh, and the states, too. Yeah, I, I also yeah. think the single most unappreciated feature of the Constitution is the enormity of the administrative state, which yes. grew up without any explicit constitutional guidance or direction. Mm. Richard Epstein, John Yu, thank you.